Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Michael, K-E-4-E-S-T. And today we have this dusty, dirty looking thing and it's not, there's a little bit of a glare up here but you can see there's a lot of dust on this. Now the story behind this one is, you see it's missing this, this is bugging me. I've, I hope I can find this. This, I mentioned if you've been on the channel for a while, I mentioned this probably a couple years ago or something like that. This radio, well, first let me tell you, this is the, uh, this is a GE, General Electric label, you know, the logos fell off. Model 7-2880 Alpha. 7-2880A that come out in 1979 and it was dubbed the super radio and I'll go over more about that in just a minute but this has been the family for years and I mentioned it before in a video that I've got a radio I want to restore and I restored that one the little AM radio that my mother had when she was uh, I don't I think she said you know now it's I asked her then before I shot the video but <laughs> I don't remember if, it seemed like she bought it you know, uh, when she was like 18 or 19, when she got her first job or something like that or whatever, you know. This one, my mother bought for my father in 1980 or 81. She couldn't remember which year it was. I looked this up, and this model came out in 1979. This is dubbed the Super Radio. Um, this is what it would, if you buy it, a little tag hanging on it, would say GE Super Radio. Um... But I remember this, this is something my dad always had during the day, you know, in the evenings and stuff, he'd turn on the TV, watch TV, and we had the TV antenna, lived out in the country, didn't, you know, have cable or anything back then, or even back then they had the big C-band satellite stuff was coming out, and we didn't ever buy that, it was expensive. But we did have, you know, regular TV order, but during the day, you know, now it's more common to watch TV, seems like all day long or whatever. Um at least for the older generation. The newer generation now is into watching YouTube or something on their phone all day. This one, during the day he would have playing. And, you know, it was way back when I remember. Um, he'd always have this playing. And it was funny, too, because uh, I know you don't care, but it was a, or a FM station he'd listen to. It was out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, that was country. Um, and anybody that's around listening knows that station, WDOD out of uh, Chattanooga. If you remember listening to that and it was country, I don't know what happened. I just know years later I was tuning around and come across that station, still on the same frequency. But now it's playing rock and roll and you got some crazy, you know, DJs that's, you know, um, more modern generation, I guess I should say, and the way they talk and cut up and the things they talk about and do. I'm like, whoa, that's definitely not the station my dad used to listen to back in the day. But anyway, so that's the story behind this. This is the reason I want to restore this and go over it and clean it up. And this has been setting, um, collecting dust for years. My father's not living anymore. It's been almost 10 years now. And then, so he would still, even back before he died, he didn't listen to it as much. I know he got, it used to sit in the living room right on top of the TV. And he'd turn this on and listen to it. They'd have it on low all day. And then every once in a while he'd turn it up and listen to, you know, news or something. And then uh, on the weekends, my mother would flip it to the AM and she'd listen to the AM radio station on this one a lot because the one that I restored before she most times stayed off in the bedroom hardly ever got used but this was like the main you know radio even though it's not that big of a radio and this is it I mean there wasn't no big speaker system and all that stuff you know but this is what he listened to a lot so I want to get the screws out of this thing because that's what this is all about but I think I can clean this up now if you see these speckles on it my dad was a painting paint, painted oil paints all the time and this got moved eventually got moved into the um 
little after you know kids moved out and we all growed up and whatever he took one of the bedrooms and made it into his like little paint studio or whatever uh, before they had to like paint his bedroom or bring in the living room or whatever he had you know always have something somewhere but he moved everything into that room and this guy moved into that room I don't know if he wanted to if it just got moved in there for whatever reason but I know he had it plugged up and it would sit over there and my mother said he didn't listen to it a whole lot but it was sitting right next to where he's painting so he's you know over here painting and you know and getting his brush and wringing it out you know and beating it on the thing or whatever and it would get these speckles on it and um, I don't know how much this can come off with the plastic. I can, uh, yeah, I think some of that's gonna come off there. I don't wanna scratch too hard with my fingernail, see what I can do with getting something uh, damp and going over it. But anyway, and there's the front of it. And it's, I mean, it's except for this right here, it's all intact. Um, and it's just AM, FM radio. Uh, if you look in here, you can see this has kind of fell off at an angle here. And I've noticed I was looking around, doing a little research on this, and I found where people selling these on some online auctions and stuff. And I found, I've seen a couple more the same way where this piece in the side here has, the glue has come loose. It's, I guess I'm assuming it's glued somehow or something in there and it's fell. I noticed the dial cord still appears to work. I don't want to turn it too much. I don't know if it's going to jam on that or not, if anything's going to jam. So, and it's, they don't seem to be jamming it, you know, itself. And, you know, the band switches and everything works. The treble is kind of a little rough to turn. You can turn it, but it's pretty rough. The bass is really rough. It's just not wanting to move much. But I don't think, you know, like most people, you know, there's some, you know, people that try you know whatever most people put these in the middle or they get stuck somewhere and that's where they stay no ever mess all you do is mess this loudness down here or the volume or af gain whichever way you know they want to put it on the radio but this here this one's the smoothest one and probably got used the most and it gets up to a certain point though and it gets rough so i'm guessing that about in here is about as far as it ever went and then you know back down and then this has got the on off switch up here on top but it still has the telescoping antenna on it that still works that's all still complete there um I even tells you it's got 200 millimeter am ferret rod inside i like where it's got the connections on the back to look up an outside antenna and this is, can run off the batteries also Oh, look at the dust in there. And but we got the cord right here like this right here. And I don't know how to read a date code on this. I mean I could figure it out or maybe somebody knows, but I just seen a date code. Date code of 3138. 3138. Maybe I could see if I can figure that out. How to read a date code on this thing. But yeah, it says, now what's interesting is back here, I don't know if you can see that in there, but it says model number 7-2800B, Bravo. And then up here, oh, it does say B up here, okay. I thought I'd seen somewhere on here that said A. Oh, I know what it was. And trying to find a schematic for this, which I did, but maybe it's a little bit different. There's this schematic here, which I, somebody had took a folded out of schematic. You can see the creases, maybe. If I turn that just right, this is a picture where somebody has taken a picture of this, but they did a pretty good job. You can see they fold, had it folded out flat. And it looks, in the actual picture itself, it looks a little better, but I tried to turn down the toner and everything so this little artifacts wouldn't show up so bad, but you can kind of still see on the bottom here what it was laying. They laid it on a white piece of paper, so that was good. But they took a picture of it folded out, the schematic. 
that's all I could find. It's really small, so it'd be kind of hard to show you, but it's, the nice thing about this is it's got three tuned, it's got three IF stage, and it says, um, I found some stuff here. FM sensitivity is 25 micro volts on FM. So back in 1979, that was pretty good. Um, AM sensitivity is 150 microvolts. And then the selectivity on FM is 50 dB. Um, but it claims, you know, six and a half inch high sensitivity speakers, 700 milliwatts of RMS audio output, separate bass and tone controls, loudness control boosts bass response at low listening levels. Um, RF tune, but somewhere I see, yeah, four IF tune circuits in the AM section, and it's got three ceramic IF filters plus three IF tune circuits in the FM section. Um, so you know, like I say, it was dubbed the super radio, and like this here just says model. What I'm reading here, I'm just reading this off a computer screen. 7-2A80, no A or B. But supposedly the schematic was for an A model. You can't see that, but it's real fine print right there. You might can see it. The camera can probably see it better than I can. But it says A is an alpha, so I don't know, we'll see. But let me get the screws out of this thing because that's part of what this is all about. Everybody wants to see the inside of this thing. And we'll see what's going on in there, and I'll be right back. All right, there is looking inside of it. Wasn't too bad to get apart. Them screws definitely, even though it's plastic into plastic, you could definitely, definitely tell that, I mean, this thing, I don't think it's ever been taken apart, which I mean, I know it hasn't, but in this case, it's definitely been taken apart. I, uh, Hope that's focusing good. A little bit of glare. Turn the lights down just a little bit so I like glare. But here is what is the first thing you see that stands out. Yep, right here. And I had tried to prop this up. I may let's see, I don't wanna off to the side here. I've got a let me back out the zoom. Get a speaker, and I didn't want to take it loose just yet. This wire, I don't want to jerk it loose in there. But I suppose I'll be just move it up here anyway. I'll bring over, pardon the camera movement, let's come into this right there. Let's see, let me bring this other lot back on and see if that helps us any. Cast some shadows. But it looks strange to me, but anyway. Look at that. That thing still moves really good. And yeah, the, uh, the piece fell off. It goes up here behind this. Uh, just some glue so I can fix that real easy. Look at that tuning capacitor in there. I mean, now that's nice. You don't see that anymore. You know, you buy AM, FM radio now, even a nice one, you know, a lot of them, they have that little tiny compact little thing. This is open air. You can, if you look in there, you can see it moving. It's got four games on it. 
five, five. It's, well, it's going to keep going, but this is, oh, okay. See how the capacitor still, the capacitor still moving. This is pegged out over here. So it's probably, you know, that needs to be adjusted. So we don't, uh, I'm going to make sure, let's see what happens when I, okay, that's, well, that's as far as it goes. Let's just slide that. That's as far as she'll go, and we're not even at the bottom of the dial. <clears throat> so, yeah. I shouldn't have done that. Now we we'll have to adjust this. <laughs> but, <clears throat> this ain't going to move now, so I have to adjust this. Can't really see this, I know. Let me, uh, let me move the camera just a second. You can see it a little bit better that way. But that is just nice to have that open air capacitor in there. But I took this down and said, hey, watch this. It's still moving. But what I've done is it was set that way on purpose. Because this must be, now I'm probably tuning way up <clears throat> into the AM broadcast or the am uh, or the i'll get it out in a minute the aircraft band so we're getting close to it so we'll uh we'll fix that but man it's still smooth it still works good um and then here on board you can see here there's our uh which one was it? Treble at the top. I think it was treble, bass, and volume. And it's got a single chip on board. And that's kind of what showed on that schematic. Um, and they started coming out with those chips, you know, to help out, you know, to do, put a lot, a lot of the stuff on the chip. That is... The chip is, is TFKGE, and then the next line, if anyone wants to look it up, is T900BI-K. Only that is a one, but no, it's, they've got the marks that definitely show that's an I. T900BI-K. So they got a lot of it happening here on this chip here. I mean, it's done really well, done a really good job as far as, you know, I can see. Um, and as far as restoration, as far as the inside, I mean, it's 43 years old now at the most, 44. You know, I don't know how many they pumped out a year or if they pumped a bunch out one year and that was it. And, you know, because back then and, well, still today too, but every year, you know, got to have a different model radio, a different look, different design. You know, um, so I don't know when this was put together. Uh, of course, it's got the date code there from figured out. Um, but these capacitors is probably okay. Especially our low voltage, 16 volts on that one. Um, but it may not hurt to change them out anyway. And then do a, an alignment on this and clean up the outside of it and all that and get it going, get this back on there. That's a nice, good piece of metal. So it's long range, high selectivity. Um, this is aluminum and nice and pretty and it's just got some dust on it. But that wipes, look at that, wipes right off. That'll be nice and bright and pretty still. And look good but uh, plastic on the front will clean up all right but so there you have it um, let me uh, get this thing ready for an alignment and check out some of the parts and go through a couple things while I got it apart and make sure things kosher and 
well, I'll do an alignment and we will uh, see how well it works. Maybe I'll hook it up to an outside antenna and see how good it works. I've got a, I've got one on the roof. Uh, one other thing I noticed here, let me see if I can, maybe, yeah, you can see that. See right there, metal gears, you know, um, it's got metal gearing on that capacitor and everything, that tuning capacitor. So, yeah. So, let me clean on this somewhat and I'll come back in uh, part two of this and maybe we'll do the alignment and see how she looks from before and after and we'll go from there. And until that video or until the next video, this is Michael, KE4EST, 73.